Hi, nice to see you. Thank you for being here today. Um, Tracy Mares, current BOE president and candidate for re-election. How are you? Hi, how are you? Well, thank you. Thank you for being here. Thank you. Um, okay, so I'd like to start our conversation by giving you the floor to introduce yourself, your connection to the district, your interest in running. Um, it's totally up to you, however you want us to get to know you a little bit. Thank you. I'm Tracy Mares, I'm lifelong resident of the district. Um, uh, that's not fully true. I left for a little bit to go to school, came back. Um, I have three kids in the district, uh, 11th grade, 9th grade, and 3rd grade to think about that. Um, I can't believe they're so old now. Um, I'm a full PTA member um, since I entered at Jackson, was even in the PTA and ECP before it was a PTA. Um, and I'm a licensed clinical social worker during the day uh, and in the evening volunteer at the schools doing the board of ed work as well as various different committees and PTA work sometimes. That's it. Great. So building on your volunteerism, and this this struck me as one of the most important questions um, because you are so active in the district and you're coming at this as a, as a volunteer. So you are taking on like the preeminent volunteer role running for the Board of Education and you're becoming kind of our volunteer captain, as it were, the BOE are, are, are like leadership volunteers modeling the way for the most immersive way you could possibly involve yourself in the school. Other than running for BOA, but from your position within that volunteer leadership role, how else can, how within your volunteer leadership role can you support caregivers and community members who want to be more active in the schools as volunteers? Um, I think, of course, the PTA is a nice way to um, encourage people to volunteer, but people don't always um, feel welcomed sometimes by different groups. It depends on what group it is. Um, but there's also, of course, the Falcons Nest Booster Club is a volunteer organization that you can join to um, give your time to help with the students in the middle high school, specifically around sports. Mm -hmm. it's also, the Woodlands Middle High School Scholarship Fund, which is near and dear to my heart because the folks on that fund um, give a lot of time just for scholarships, just for Woodlands graduates. And they raise money, they fundraise today. They're having a flea market actually. They are, um, yeah. Yes, at Pressure Park um, all day. And uh, they work really hard to make sure that our students have money to go to college. It doesn't fund college fully, but it gives a little something. <clears throat> I believe all children get a little something um, if they graduate from Woodlands High School. Um, there's also... I'm trying to think of any other like organized ways to volunteer. Mm. So I guess that's one question building on that is mm -hmm. how do you see the, how do you see where the school is situated in the community? And I'm thinking in particular of community members who want to volunteer from a personal perspective. I was mm -hmm. interested to learn more about the schools before my kids were old enough to be there. And mm -hmm. volunteering would have been a great way to do that. And I had no idea where to even start. <laughs> So I think that speaks to a little bit of where the school is in the greater Greenberg community as an institution. Yeah. How would you identify that? Well, I I don't think that, so I, so one of the, you're probably going to ask me this later, but one of the critiques I would have about the community, the school community, is that we don't fully support our schools, mm -hmm. like some other areas, right? We have certain areas that are known for great schools, but actually, the reason why they're known for great schools is because community actually pours into that school and supports that school. They, you know, fundraise for the athletics, they fundraise for the, you know, the science experiments and, and projects that they have. So um, if our community were to support our schools more, so it's a great question, if people were to volunteer more to help out, I definitely think that our school district would be even better than it is today. Um, so various ways that you can volunteer that the Board of Ed has available are Board of Ed committees, and there are various committees. We have finance and facilities committees, so if someone has a background in finance or they find financing interesting and they want to know more about it, where their tax money goes, they could join that committee. There's also um, the finance and facilities, so there's the 
um, facilities piece of it, if you know things about um, construction and building and looking at our facilities, because we have, we own several properties as well as have a ton of things that need to be prepared. Yeah. That's an area that you could um, volunteer. That's an open committee. There's also the community engagement committee. And that's where um, the committee traditionally has gone out into the community to um, inform people of what's going on in the schools and people from the community have joined that committee to let us know what things need to improve mm -hmm. as far as communications are concerned, as far as community involvement is concerned. Um, there's also an audit committee, again, finances, if you have any you know, background in finance or auditing, or you're just interested in that, you can apply to be on that committee. That committee has like a a process more so it's not fully open like the other committees there's the education committee if you have a history working in education or you're just interested in knowing about our programs how our students are doing things that are upcoming in education that's the committee you can join um I'm trying to think there's a policy committee that's people so don't really come to that one um <laughs> uh, I didn't so many you. committees there, there are, are seven of you running Actually, every single we, one of these committees we we actually join we con, we join committees. We used to have them all like individual. <laughs> um, so we kind of combine those some committees. Um, the policy committee, not too many people come, but if you're interested in that sort of thing, that would be a great committee. There's also safety and technology. That's an open committee, meaning people can, can like watch and, and send questions and participate in that way. Uh, but they do have a lot of closed session um, times because they're talking about safety, obviously. Um, you can also, we used to, funny enough, how I got involved myself in board of ed meetings as a parent is I met some volunteers that had volunteered to come and read to students. They were retired um moms themselves and they used to show up at Lee F. Jackson I believe and read to the students obviously they talked to the principal they went through their vetting safety process but they used to come and read to the students that were struggling to read themselves and do some just volunteer literacy work and and they had a conversation with me one day we were talking I was a very young new parent and they said, why don't you come to board meetings? And I was like, what's a board meeting? And that's how I started attending board meetings, ironically enough. But um, that's another way people can volunteer in the schools. Um, we have tons of sporting events on the middle high school level. Uh, like I said, some of the other areas, community areas actually attend their local school district events and sporting events. That's an amazing way to come and get involved as well. So it occurs to me as you're saying all of these amazing things that I never introduced myself. Uh, my name is Samantha Ives. I am the education chair for the Hartsdale Neighbors Association. Um, we are a volunteer civic association. We work very hard to build bridges within the community. And my position as the education chair is to connect community members to the school, answer questions, present the school to heart the Hartsdale community and uh, I can use help <laughs> with that. So on the community side, you're welcome to join the Hartsdale Neighbors Association too. We're always open to ideas and suggestions and volunteerism. And you can also utilize HNA and me to connect to some of these amazing volunteer opportunities within the school. So, which leads me to my next question and it's, it's the same question, but it's on the other side. It may not be volunteerism or board related, but it will be your your opinion and your your viewpoint. Um, volunteers should and can and need to present themselves to the school. The school is a fully functioning institution. There's a lot going on and for volunteers to step up is enormously helpful. However, um, it takes two, right? There's a partnership there. So how do you think the school could better reach community members, particularly those without children in the district? Um, I think the school in general can do a better job of outreaching to the community. Of course, that's easy for me to say because I don't work at the schools. I volunteer for board service, but um, definitely communicating more with some of the civic associations, your heart still neighbors, but there's uh, several other civic associations throughout um, unincorporated Greenberg. And I don't know that the district has made connections in that way with all of the um, individual uh, 
home associations. So that is something that I think we could probably do a better job with. Um, the problem since COVID, <laughs> everyone's on Zoom. Like we're doing the interview on Zoom. People don't necessarily want to go out. They don't have the time. They don't make the time. I don't know if we got busier or we just overbook more now. I don't know what happens. Um, but definitely outreaching more to the civic associations, the homeowners associations, um, reaching out more through the town, showing up at, you know, town events and even handing out business cards and having kind of more community relations, um, relationships, I think is helpful. But, you know, since we, we changed administration back in 2021, and so we really tried to focus more on getting the academics and the rigor up. Um, we do send out newsletters. We've really stuck to getting them out quarterly now, um, which is great. And I, you know, I try to, in my messaging, try to always speak to our community. I hope people read them, um, but speak to our neighbors and say like, listen, we really need your expertise. You know, if you have expertise in education, come out to the education committee meeting. If you're, you know, finance or facility, come out and talk to us and let us know what, what your opinion is about things and how you can help um, improve the district. Always hiring students and children um, from within our community is helpful. Um, you know, residents now, summer is coming up, all the kids are looking for jobs 14 and over, um, having them volunteer. You know, I had a babysitter from Woodlands Middle High School when I was an elementary mom. Me too. <laughs> and I wasn't sure if I was going to send them to the high school, but I had a babysitter and she's excellent. She's 29 now and she is a nurse practitioner. She went straight from Woodlands to NYU and straight from NYU to Columbia University. And she makes a lot more money than I do. <laughs> and she has no kids, which is great for her. And she actually lives now. She has a condo in Hartsdale. So which that's awesome. Good. Yeah, you're reminding me, this is a little off topic, but you're reminding me that this week, late this week, was the college announcement day. Yes. Is it, it has a name. Is it college announcement day? College we, signing day. College <laughs> signing day. Oh my yeah. goodness. Our, if you haven't seen the uh, check social media to see the list of the dozens of universities and Ivy Leagues and amazing places that our students are going, those who cho choose to do the university track. And within that group, there's one point six million dollars worth of funding yeah. going to our so the, the other thing is that our students have been accepted to way more schools these are schools that they've signed to right right because this is the signing day their acceptance yeah we don't There's even tons of reasons why people may or may not choose certain schools maybe finance right. maybe parents say you can't go that far i'm having right. that conversation <laughs> with my daughter right now <laughs> about how far <laughs> she can go because you know distance creates other issues right so sometimes parents limit children with going certain distances, but they've been accepted to a wide range of schools. So this is just the schools they've, they're committing to. So exciting. Um, our next question, and I don't, I don't see a way to, I'm just going to ask because I don't see a way to. Um, the next question I have for you is very simply what in the past year or two, I'll say from your position within this new administration, since it's been a little over a year now, what do you think is the most exciting positive thing that you've seen in the last year or two? Hmm, that's hard. Um, so exciting. Um, probably that we are really getting things done, I think, moving for uh, facilities. Hmm. Wise, um, we definitely have a lot of board members now that are interested in the facilities committee. I, I think prior to the current administration, there were maybe two or three select board members that used to come. Now we actually had to make it a board uh, open committee to where you consistently have four or five board members there um, asking questions involved. We've actually had donations from um, two assembly persons, um, Senator Stewart Cousins and the recent um, assembly at Benanti of half a million dollars to improve certain facilities. So those are really exciting things that are going on. I know for years prior, we had really tried with these people and there was no movement. Um, I don't know if COVID helped or what happened, but we were able to move that forward at least. Um, and I think I'm hoping there could be some more movement with the finance and the facilities specifically. Um, 
it's funny because last meeting we just talked about bureaucracy Thursday night, <laughs> night but a lot of things slow up um, progress in facilities. But uh, that's probably the most exciting things that have been going on. Great. And then on the other side of that, looking to the next, I'm going to say same time frame. So looking to the next year, year and a half, and I'll let you expand upon that. We just put a five-year plan down on paper. So within five years and a little bit beyond, what do you think, breaking up those time frames, what do you think is coming up that you're looking forward to? Um, I'm really looking forward to seeing how the academics can soar um, and how, you know, my individual children are doing well, sure. But I really want everyone to do well, all of their cohorts, the kids that I've known since kindergarten and I've seen them, they've been in classes with. Um, I want to make sure all children get to a level that they want to be able to achieve and reach their own individual goal. And so I'm hoping that with the way that the strategic plan is, sched is um, scheduled and organized, we can really hit all children and make sure that they are offered opportunities. And so that's the, the biggest thing that I'm looking forward to. Excellent. Um, I have one final bit of conversation, but I also want to call out because from my position as an advocate in some of those political spaces, uh, I will say that over the past six years that I've been involved in the district, I have seen not aggressive, assertive advocacy on Greenberg's behalf from parents, board members, administrators to specifically those politicians who for years said, we can't do it, we can't do it, there's too much other need, there's too much other stuff going on. And I, I will say that there has been some very strong advocacy. So I don't think it came out of thin air. I think there's been a lot of good work done on the ground, uh, which which takes community involvement and volunteerism. So we're gonna tie that back up together. So my final question and bit of conversation, uh, when we go vote on May 16th, that's coming up Tuesday, May 16th, 7 a.m. to 9 p.m. I'll say that again before we close out at the high school gym. Um, we, will be we will be voting you in. There are two candidates for two positions. So an early congratulations. Um, Thank we are you. also voting to approve the school budget. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Maybe early, but I think we're okay. Uh, <laughs> we're also voting to approve the school budget. So can you please speak to what do you think the most positive aspects of this coming up budget are and what do you wish were included or that we may be looking toward in the next few budget cycles? Well, what I'll tell you I wish were included were more PPS, which is Pupil Personnel Services um, positions, I really advocated and lost for um, more social work or psychologist positions. Social workers are a little cheaper than psychologists, but um, psychologists can do more with regard to testing as well and to provide services for special education students, um, which are testing services. But um, I really wish we could get more um, of those folks hired into the district, even if we were to get more interns, but I know we have a small amount of interns now, um, because I really think that the kids need people to talk to, um, from kindergarten all the way up or pre-K all the way up through 12th grade. I think they really, um, relish and enjoy adult interaction and, and listening ears. So if we could have more of those, um, persons, I think our children would do better. There'd be less depression. There'd be less um, maladaptive behaviors that kind of tie in with stress because all children have stress and adults have stress as well. But we have, we have ways and coping skills that are kind of cemented on how to deal with them. Children don't have those, they're learning them. And so if we could kind of provide that for our children in the school environment, I think that they would be better. I mean, they would perform better. And so that that's really it as far as what's missing. Um, what I like about the, um, the new budget is the way that we're trying to address and um, support our instructional staff, where we're trying to give them more professional development. Um, I don't think that they need, let me say this right, uh, teaching on how to do their job at all. I think they do very good job um, in general, but I think having more support, having more professional development, meaning letting them grow within whatever the area is that they teach or administrate on, or even providing professional development for our monitors and our security staff and our secretaries is helpful. 
Um, I like professional development in my job. So I think part of it is really having um, uh, really detailed communication with the professional and finding out what they want to increase their um, their job duties and their job output and performance, and then giving them that. So we've really um, put some money toward professional development. So I'm hoping with the administrate at uh, the superintendent central office administration talking with some of the union leadership figuring out what development they want to, to kind of enhance their own product that would be good um and then that will just turn over and present well into our children as well excellent well, thank you. We'll try to keep it short and sweet. So one more time, I'm going to say Tuesday, May 16th, please come up to the Woodlands Middle High School Gymnasium from 7 a.m. to 9 p.m. to vote to approve the budget and support our schools and to welcome our new school board candidate and returning school board candidate. Thank, thank you for your time. Thank you. Bye. Bye. Thank you.